So today I will introduce Symbolica, which is a new computer algebra system that aims to provide world-class performance um, while still being able to function on very large inputs. For example, yesterday, one of my users reported that they were working on an expression that is one terabyte in size and things are still going uh, as well as intended. Um, so the idea is that it's, it program should still be intuitive and easy to use, which is often not the case with other software that uh, can do things like this. Um, it's also a library for Rust and for Python. So um, it should be easy to integrate in software you already have. And finally, it's free for hobbyists and for academics and non-commercial use, one core and one instance is free. And as you can see here, it's been used by uh, these uh, organizations already. All right, so let's jump right in to an example. So here we create the expression x plus one squared and we expand it and print the results. And indeed we get the expected outcome. Um, let's look at a slightly more complicated example, series expansion. So we first register a variable x, then we parse uh, the following expression here. And we say, right, we series expand this expression A in X around the point zero up till depth four, where this true signifies that it's uh, an absolute uh, order. And we get the uh, Laurent series we expect out of this. Um, another feature is pattern matching. So we have this very complicated looking expression here, which is a function, which has a subfunction, And we say that we want to match the following pattern, which is a function f, then any number of arguments a, the literal x, a b, one argument could be anything, and c, this could be any number of arguments. And we want to replace this by this right-hand side, which prints c and then a. So studying this pattern, we would see that c would be five, seven, B would be six, and A would be this entire chunk before the X. And this is also what we get. So this you can think of as um, a mathematical regex. Um, so I mentioned the Python API, but Python of course is very slow. So we want to do as little work as possible in Python itself. So for this, um, you can create computational graphs with Symbolica, which generates instructions that should be executed by Rust in the end. So here is a small example program where you apply some sort of Fibonacci uh, relation. And even though you code all the instructions in Python, it will be executed entirely in Rust. Um, so the reason why Symbolica is fast is because uh, it has lots of custom data structures. It has finite field arithmetic, uh, primitives that actually work well is taking the modulus operation is very slow. Then this auto upgrading and downgrading integers. So uh, the integer will always fit the smallest uh, variant of this enum. And this can save a lot of time during computations. Next there's stuff like precision tracking floating point numbers, right? Often you do a computation and you don't know how many digits in the end are accurate. So for example, if you subtract one with 16 digits of precision, uh, uh, if you subtract 0, 9, and 9 with 16 digits of precision from it, in the end, you'll only be left with 12.7 decimal digits of precision. Um, it also has some more advanced stuff with numerical integration. This is something we can look at during the tutorial later today. Um, so Symbolica is about a thousand times faster than SymPy, but it could be infinitely more if you make the problem larger, because at some point you will run out of memory with SymPy. Um, here on the right, there's a paper where many um, symbolic toolkits have been tried for uh, rational polynomial algebra. And as you can see, Symbolica is doing very well here. Um, and it's also being used in practice for calculations like this. All right, so I just want to sketch in one slide why computer algebra is hard. I think most of you have experience with working with floats, but once you start transitioning away from that, things um, get uh, hard in probably unexpected ways. So for example, let's have a look at this ratio, A over B. And my question is, is this in its simplest form, 
or is there some sort of common factor between the numerator and the denominator? For example, two over four would be a one over two, right? Maybe something similar is happening here. Um, so if you apply the Euclidean algorithm to this, you get the following output. So even though we started with 21 as the largest coefficient in the input, now in the output, we have a number that doesn't even fit in an I64 anymore. And this is one of the problems of computer algebra is that intermediate expressions tend to blow up completely if you do exact arithmetic. So how do we represent an, an expression in the first place? Well, naively, you'd say, OK, we just have an enum, right? an enum atom that uh, can be a number, a variable, uh, or multiplications. And this structure is recursive in some sense. Now, this is very nice for pattern matching Rust. But the downside is that this thing takes up 32 bytes of memory per atom. And it's also completely fragmented. So instead, Symbolica uses a linear representation of the expression. So simply a vec of u8. So for example, f of x 2 over 5, you can code that in only 15 bytes. Uh, here there's an example where this 3 is a tag that we have a function instead of a variable, for example. Uh, this 2 here says that we have two arguments. And this blue chunk here means x. And 2 over 5 is coded like this. Now, this is all very nice. And you can condense things uh, rather well. But of course, we don't want to have our algorithms working on this linear representation. So instead, we have two structures, the atom and the atom view, which are basically wrappers around the vector of u8. And we can still get the benefits from pattern matching again on these enums. So let's have a look what, for example, the function looks like. So function is just a vector of u8, where the first one is this 3 that I mentioned earlier. And it has functions like create a new one or add an argument, where the argument is an atom view. Um, now, the view version of the atom is simply the slice of u8. And again, the first component needs to be a 3. Now, on this, uh, convenient uh, traits are implemented. For example, into iterator. Um, and convenient functions like get n arcs is there as well. So by using these abstractions, we can completely hide that we have a linear representation. So here there's a recursive function that walks through the tree, right? When the atom is a multiplication, it goes through all the arguments of the multiplication. <laughs> and it's completely hidden that the underlying representation is linear. So uh, traits can be used to abstract over mathematical domains. Uh, there's also the Rust grade Feyenoord math that does something similar. So for example, <clears throat> in mathematics, a ring is an object that has addition and multiplication um, uh, over a certain element of the ring. So for example, you can have the ring of integers and the element would then be an integer. Then we have Euclidean domains, which have a GCD function, but all Euclidean domains are also rings. Then we have fields that have division and inversion, and all fields are Euclidean domains. As you can see with this, uh, with traits, we can very nicely capture these mathematical patterns. Now, then you can start nesting. For example, you can build a polynomial <clears throat> where the coefficients are over some sort of ring R, um, a vector here of uh, these Rs. Um, but then we think and think, wait, a polynomial, you can add them and subtract them and multiply them. So the polynomials themselves also rings, at least element of rings. So we create the structure of polynomial ring that implements ring and sets the element type to be polynomial of R. And we can go further because we know that if the uh, coefficient of a polynomial is a field, the polynomial itself would be a Euclidean domain. So this works very, very nicely. So is Rust good for designing a computer algebra system? Well, I'd say yes. Uh, the trade system, as I just showed, is very powerful. Um, performance of code is pretty good. Um, and one thing is I have Python API, PyO3 plus a custom PyI file is great for producing typed Python. Um, sadly, there's also some shortcomings. Uh, orphan rules are extremely annoying. 
Um, there's no DREF from atom to atom view. Um, and the killer is actually specialization. There's many, many cases where I need specialization and it just isn't there yet. So I really hope that it will be added soon, but who knows? And then finally, there's no F128 support yet, but um, it's being worked on. So I hope to pique your interest a bit. Um, later today, I'll be uh, hosting a tutorial about um, Symbolica, so you're all very welcome to join. Thank you.